Okay, so here we're here we are. We're back at it, guys. I've got two turns left in uh, 6.7 scenario Gordon attacks in to take Washington. So where we left off last time, the Union defense was probably still up in this position. The Cav was maybe falling back into here. Uh, I think maybe by the four o'clock turn, maybe it was the 4.15 turn, I was able to get initiative with McCausland and he is under orders, attack orders, to advance uh, up this road right here. And basically his goal is to take that orchard and hold a position there, mostly just protecting the flank of uh, Gordon's division as it moves up. There was some interesting action kind of in this general region. We threw the Union back. Uh, some of their units that were shaken in DG took up positions inside this little sunken road here. And you'll see that there's a REPL there. That was, I believe, Truex. He was wounded in, in a charge. Uh, Evans came in with a couple units. You'll notice I have a couple decent stacks. I've lost enough SP with the Confederates now that I'm trying to consolidate some of those regiments together into bigger stacks so that we're getting a little bit more effective with our fires and our charges. The biggest hurt for the Confederates is you'll notice that Evans is now a rebel. He was killed leading a charge, and that was, uh, I believe there was a Union infantry unit protecting this hex right here. Uh, he was stacked on top, and they thrust through. You'll see that he's bloodlust up here now. He had to take a morale check. Uh, that artillery fired at him. But he was killed in the charge, so now... Evans' brigade is going to have to roll zeros. Looking back, it probably was not an intelligent decision to make. Uh, neither was it probably to do with York, who I actually successfully charged with a couple times as well. Ricketts is up into the defense. He's sitting on that big R12 unit. I think they're down to maybe 10 SPs, and they're kind of holding this flank. The game's pretty much going to be over if... Uh, this position gets taken by the Confederates. That is the 8th Corps HQ. If that gets overrun, then we're going to have a skedaddle. There's going to be nobody defending the bridges. It's all over for there. Right now, we are in the 515 turn, the Confederate turn. It ends at the end of the 530 turn. So we've got two turns left to go. This is the last turn we're going to have without any chance for fluke stoppage. So at the start of the next Confederate turn, we're going to have to see if the advance is capable of continuing. They might fluke out, which is going to end it right there for us. So let's see what happens. I figured I'd uh, just play these two turns real quick so we can kind of see what happens. And who knows? I don't know who's going to win. I... I need to do a couple things here with the Confederates to dislodge some of these guys so that I can free up some others. So... Let's start here. Um, artillery, obviously, is what I like to do first. So let's take this RD unit sitting back here. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The same position that we've really been hitting all day. I should be putting an acquisition counter on that uh, hex. So he's a six down to the four to five. That's going to be a morale check on a B unit. Nothing, nothing wrong with them or anything. Uh, an eight on a B is just going to be okay. Let's see here. All right, so let's take, let's go ahead and see what we can do with Evans' brigade. So Evans is a zero leader now. His repels into play. Let's roll for him a 1d6. They have half movement points. Hmm. Okay, so this stack right here. Let's see what we got in here. Yeah, so they can fire on the 6 to 8. They're going to take a 6 to 8 shot into the, REPL, the Union REPL unit in here. But you'll see that he's in a, like a sunken road position, which means he's going to get 
the protective terrain shift. So we're on the six to eight, that's gonna knock us down to the four to five. He'll also, if we hit him, get the benefit in a subsequent morale check. Uh, let's see here. So that is gonna be just nothing. Uh, we got a stack here with Gordon in it. I need to dislodge these guys. So he's gonna take a four to five down to the two to three uh, into the REPL. And he's got nothing either. Oh boy. Um, okay, so this guy's bloodlusted. I really don't know. Yeah, he's a small guy, so there's no point in doing that anything with him. Unfortunately, I'm facing the wrong way, and I'd have to bloodlust back into that guy, which I don't want to do. So I kind of have a bit of a conundrum here. I believe this stack is wrecked, but we might as well take our shot there. So a three, two to three, down to the one, down to the minus A. An eight. Wish I would have had those earlier. That's going to be nothing. Uh, okay, let's see if we can dislodge Ricketts here. So Stewart is going to take a rear shot into Ricketts stack. So it's a 2-3, to three, down to the 1 for range, but then back up to the 2-3, to three, back up to the 4-5 to five for the rear. A 6 is just going to be a morale check. He's got a good morale. Oh! Wow. I am not smart. Look at that. That's called collateral damage. And we don't like to do it. I think he was actually, I think they were maybe like that. Um, so his morale check, he is gonna be okay. Where did this guy come from? Oh, yes. Okay. So these guys, we're sitting down here. Perhaps I need to slow my die rolling down slightly. Okay. So the morale check was okay. Um, I think I'm just going to have to try to take some fire combats here. So this is going to be on the two to three. That's going to be nothing. Uh, we're going to have to turn, and we're going to take a shot at this artillery, so he will get opening volley, which is going to miss. So we'll roll for that shot. We'll see if it's worth looking up. A seven, yep. Three, so he was bringing a four to five on a seven is going to be a morale check against that C artillery unit. He's okay. And then I think my last stack up here is Terry. So I guess my, my final option here, my rules is the Confederates have been pretty bad. I think what I'm going to do is maybe just charge through with Terry. If I can't dislodge Rigget, Ricketts, bleh, um, I think I'm going to be in big trouble because there's still some relatively decent units sitting back here protecting that HQ. They're going to be able to consolidate. I don't think I can win as the Confederates right now. These guys are going to be getting to there and kind of stopping. So let's see what Terry's got in here. I know he doesn't have any wreck guys, so we might as well make a closing roll. Let's see if we can go into Ricketts. He can, so they're gonna go, that entire stack's gonna go one. We'll try to make another closing roll. Three, Terry's gonna give a good modifier to go in there, so he's a B. He's going in anyways. All right, so this is probably for the kitten caboodle here. Here's the opening volley. A five. When we look at the charge, it's gonna be a one loss. So we will have to roll to see if uh, Terry is wounded or killed. A 
Let's do that right now. He is going to be okay. So Terry survives. Uh, this unit underneath Ricketts. And I got lazy and didn't clip a single counter for this, so I'm using two numerical counters. Uh-oh. Ellie's barking. And we'll roll for him. And Ricketts is killed. No, he's wounded, which is going to effectively take him out of the game. Uh, so Ricketts is going to now have to be replaced. And his only replacement is going to be McLennan. So now I've got to find where I want to put McLennan's replacement with the 236. And we'll go ahead and we'll put it right there. So now he's going to be forced to take a morale check from that charge. Uh, he's a C morale. He's actually going to be bigger. Uh, so there's going to be a negative one to this die roll. But we have Terry who's going to apply his morale so it's actually going to be a plus two, now that I look at it. So a C plus two, an eight, a ten on a C, DG, B3, L1. So he's going to go DG, B3, one, two, three, and then we'll pop that off the top. He's going to sit there and throw cowardlies, but they're not going to affect anything. So then Terry's going to move into there. So that would have been one, two movement points. I think, well, now that he succeeded in his charge, he can't change his facing or his trajectory or anything like that. I think what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to sit right there. I think. Okay, so then over here we've got this cav. These guys are gonna move. Uh, we're gonna attempt to make a closing roll here. So see, he's gonna fail. So he'll fire. He's going to be a R4 unit, so 4 to 5 column, down to the 2 to 3 for range, down to the 1 for open order. When you're firing at open order units, they're more difficult to hit. A 7 on the 1 is going to be nothing. Ellie, come here. Come here. I'm going to put the dog outside. So let's go ahead and move up then. Uh, we'll take this stack and we'll go one. And he'll fire at uh, this unit, which is going to cause him to retreat. He'll go there. These guys I don't think are really going to have... They're just kind of holding them in check. They're, they've probably completed their orders with where I told them to go. So, realistically, I can't really push these guys up. Uh, this guy probably can still do what he needs to do. So, he's going to move one, and he's actually going to take a rear shot into this unit right here. So, it's a two to three, down to the one for range, probably down to the negative A for him being in that sunken road, coming through that direction. But then we're going to go back to the two to three for firing through the rear. And a seven, I think, is going to be just shy of anything. Nope, that's actually a morale check. All right, so they're going to take a morale check. They're going to get a negative one for the leader and a negative one for the protective terrain. They're okay. So that's it for the Confederate turn. Let's flip it over to the Union turn. 
Uh, Bloodlust are going to come off. No other things to do in the rally phase. Um, okay, so in the Union turn, let's take a couple shots here. We're going to take a one shot into there. Eight on the one is going to be a morale check on a B. A seven, I believe he's okay. He's not wrecked, so yep, he's good. Now this artillery is right up against him. He's got a one, but he's got canister, so he's going to shift to the two to three and take a shot right there. Six on the two to three is nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's take a shot into here. So this is going to be a four to five down to the two to three. A seven, I believe we said that was a morale check on a B. Whoa, doesn't count if it's not on the table. Seven, he's okay. And we'll take a Hail Mary shot here on the negative A at that same unit. Snakes aren't going to do it. And this unit here. Got our DG guy. I got no uh, hand-eye coordination picking these up today. Woo. Like I said. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do with this guy is he's going to go one, two, three, and turn back. He's DG'd, so he's only got half movement. I just kind of want to get him out of the way. And just to be safe, let's throw this unit. They're going to go... They're going to turn their facing like this for one, two, three, four, into there. Get up in those rifle pits. And then this calf can freely move. We're not concerned about them. Unfortunately, I'm playing solo, so I know that these guys are kind of complete with their orders. So they can kind of just run back here and screen. I really don't think there's going to be any chance for the Confederates here. I've just got too much stuff in the way. That would be it for the Union. Let's flip it over to the other turn. Let's go to the Confederate turn and just roll for fluke stoppage with uh, Gordon. Gordon might fluke. So he rolled a... Five. Oh, uh, where are we at here? Fluke stoppage. So the original die roll was less than six. So I need to make a subsequent roll. And Gordon's going to fluke, which he rolled snakes, which on his... Uh, Leader roll, so you'll notice here it says base check, pass on a modified six. I didn't have a reserve. If I would have had a reserve, that would have helped me. Um, but I rolled a five, which means I failed my base check, so then I roll for my leader command value. Gordon's a four, and I rolled snakes there, which is not higher than six or better. So they're going to fluke out. That would have been the last turn. That was the first turn that I was able to fluke. Like I said in the other video, there's an eight-turn grace period for fluke stoppage. So in this instance, I would be forced to withdraw back out of small arms range, which effectively means that this attack is over. This division would need to receive new attack orders or achieve attack recovery if this was some sort of campaign game or um, longer scenario where there were other objectives. I like this scenario a lot. It's very straightforward. You get to play with a couple different things. Um, you've got your 
artillery battalions, which this guy took forever to roll to move his artillery battalion. I think they just got up there when I started this video. You've got some cav units over here that you can kind of play with on the wing. It would have been nice if they would have come online a little bit quicker. I probably could have utilized them a little more effectively. And I really just didn't roll super well with the Confederates when I was attacking and needed to take advantage of certain situations. But on the rever on the flip side, the reverse side, uh, the Union also didn't really do too much damage on their opening volley. So perhaps I'm just a better Union player than I am a Confederate player. Probably wouldn't have been able to get there even if I didn't fluke just by looking at this. So... Moral of the story is I'm not good at attacking. Actually, it's more difficult to attack in this game, which makes sense. Uh, if you get crazy with it and you put people out on a limb in front of your lines, they're going to get torched and you're going to lose regiments left and right. The opening volleys can really be... They can really hurt you if they hit a lot. So I think it makes sense. That's the way it should be. And it gives you a good feel for the combat and how it happened in this time period so that's it short and quick just wanted to show you guys the end of that scenario and perhaps we'll set up another one here this weekend we'll have to see maybe i'll give the campaign game a quick just set up and see what it looks like and we'll go from there see ya